There are a few things you have to go over when you start a video out like this. Yes, we're talking about a player that has arguably been on one of the most overpaid contracts in the NHL the past few seasons. Yes, we're talking about this player on a different team. We're going to be going over expectations versus reality. We're going to be going over defensive play. There are so many things to talk about when it comes to Oliver ekman Larson of the Vancouver Canucks that I feel like we're going to need to structure this video like so. So, let's go over and talk about, firstly, the player's history. Secondly, we'll talk about the player's salary. Thirdly, we'll talk about the player on ice this season. Fourthly, we'll talk about the player on ice last season. And then we'll wrap things up by going over what exactly the holistic profile of this player is. Whether or not he lives up to everything and all that, it's a conversation for the end of the video. Before we get over with that, though, we have to talk about the Canucks and their postponed game, because with all the games going on in the NHL, you know, Vancouver only playing one game in however many days, 10 days or whatever it is, Tomorrow's game against Ottawa, which would have been held at Rogers Arena at potentially 50% capacity, has been postponed. The NHL has cited the capacity and attendance limits as the reason for the postponements, so we have to make that pretty clear. This game is not being postponed because the virus is going around. The game is being postponed because there aren't going to be too many people in the seats and the NHL wants to make money. So... Yeah, what are we going to be able to do? It sucks, eh? Definitely sucks. But either way, talking about the Vancouver Canucks and going over Oliver ekman Larson, let's go over the profile of this guy and why exactly he was such an interesting piece when the Vancouver Canucks acquired him from the Arizona Coyotes. When the heck was the trade? A few months ago? Yeah, let's just say a few months ago. Oliver ekman Larson is an old defenseman. He's 30 years old, 6'2", 201, who, for the majority of his career with the Arizona Coyotes, was a really gifted offensive caliber defenseman. He maxed out at 55 points in 75 games played, which is odd because that's, I think, the one year I had him in my fantasy pool that was going on in my high school. But OEL was... At his best, a very, very strong, offensively capable, goal-scoring, playmaking defenseman, and he had 20 goals in back-to-back -back years. That's difficult to do for a D-man, especially in today's NHL. Now, Ekman Larson, as the years had gone on, was so good that the Arizona Coyotes signed him to a pretty big contract. $8.25 million a season starting in 2019-20 that would keep him on the payroll for the next eight years till 2027. Now, he's 30 right now. This contract expires in five years. He'll be 35, 36 years old when this contract is off the books. And $8.25 million a season, even right now, is pretty steep. However, OEL went out there and stopped being the guy that the Arizona Coyotes went out there and paid. Unfortunately, towards the end of his tenure with the Arizona Coyotes, the production started to slow down a little bit. The consistency started to slow down a little bit, too. At the end of his tenure in Arizona, he had himself 24 points in a 46-game sample, 30 points in 66 games the year before. Now, sure, those numbers are not that bad. If you do the math right here, 24 divided by 46 multiplied out by 82, he was on pace for 42 points in his last season with Arizona. It's just the on-ice play was really, really not that great. Here's the JFresh chart of Oliver ekman Larson and everything he did in 2020-2021. His wins above replacement number was at 3%, meaning that he was in the bottom percentile of defensemen in the National Hockey League when it came to advanced analytics, even though he was going out there and scoring some goals. The only metric where he was above average was his shooting category, which was at 56%, meaning that his overall shot selection and ability of getting the puck towards the goal was above average. Now, ekman Larson was on a bad Arizona team, and so when the team went out there and tried to trade away all their pieces, they traded away Christian Dvorak, they traded away Connor Garland, they traded away some good players on their squad, ekman Larson was in that conversation too. Despite the fact that it was common consensus that his best days were behind him, the Vancouver Canucks went out there and acquired OEL. Not for the full cap hit though, there was a little bit of salary retained there. Ekman Larson on Vancouver's payroll is making $7.26 million a season till the end of the contract, which goes until 2027, and he does have a full no-move clause. The entire drama that went on about a year ago, where OEL was on the market and the Arizona Coyotes wanted to trade this guy, but he was like, yeah, I have a no-move, sorry. You know what, though? 
I'm going to do you a solid, Arizona. If you actually do want to trade me, which it's very apparent that you do, I'm going to allow a trade to two teams, Boston or Vancouver. There. Those are your terms. I'm not supposed to be able to do that because I have the right to go out there and veto any trade, but I'm going to go out there and give you that out. It didn't happen when that scenario was proposed, but eventually OEL did get traded over to Vancouver in the Connor Garland trade. And to be fair, a lot of Canucks fans were saying, okay, this is going to suck. This guy's like left-handed Tyler Myers. He is so bad defensively. Sure, he might get 20, 30, 40 points even for the Canucks, but what the heck are we going to do with this guy on our team? And it's funny because the opposite has been true. Oliver ekman Larson this season has not produced all too well comparative to the numbers he has had before. In 31 games played, he's had two goals, four assists for six total points, which is a really low number and it would be one of the worst seasons in his career should he actually go out there and finish on this pace. But when it comes to the defense, oddly enough, this has been the absolute spotlight of Oliver ekman Larson and the game he has had so far. If you go over to JFresh and you see the advanced analytics for OEL, this was his wins above replacement number and metric for last season. If you add on the limited sample that OEL has displayed in 2021-2022 into the overall mix, Oliver Eggman Larson's numbers go from a 3% wins above replacement metric to a 33% replacement metric. His even strength defensive coverage increases by 52%. And this is a sample that includes only a fraction of games from this year, and the majority of that sample is being comprised of games from last season. Oliver ekman Larson on the Vancouver Canucks has honestly been one of the better defensemen on the team. And I say defensemen with a focus on the defense. He's gone out there defending rushes, forcing guys to the outside, in his own zone making smart veteran plays, chipping it up the boards to the proper areas, it's almost like the poise that the Vancouver Canucks lost in this decor with Alex Edler has been replaced with the other 23 wearing Swedish left-handed defensemen in OEL. Here's a stat from the latest 32 Thoughts article from Elliot Friedman. Vancouver's OEL is the only player to be on ice for more than 500 minutes at 5v5 and fewer than 10 goals against. And the next two highest are Justin Falk and Nick Jensen at 12. OEL also has a 968 on ice save percentage, and Falk is second with a 950. Finally, OEL has had an abysmal on ice shooting percentage, in large part because his deployment is one of the most defensively skewed, and because of Travis Green, the dude is ready for some serious regression to the mean on the scoring side. Pretty much what this means is that OEL and the way he's been playing has kind of been the opposite of what we expected. Straight good top of the league defending and not all too great offense compared to bad defense, good offense. And to be fair, I'm not going to go out there and try to give a reason for why OEL is not producing. I think the only thing we can go out there and say is that his shooting percentage being so low pays tribute to that. But he is going out there and actually doing some pretty good things when it comes to the offensive zone. He's always getting his pucks going through the goal. It's one of the skills he developed in Arizona, which allowed him to be such a potent goal scorer back-to-back 20-goal -back years in the mid-2010s. And now, under a different system, we have ourselves Bruce Boudreaux instead of Travis Green. This is no longer the defensive, you know, kind of sit back and let the opposition do their thing and wait till they make a mistake and try to recover with forwards waiting at the opposing team's blue line kind of strategy anymore. This is a way different team under Boudreaux. And ekman Larson being here, probably being given a bigger role, hopefully is going to go out there and start producing for the better. Now, the ultimate question is... Is he worth the money? Absolutely not. He is not an $8.25 million defenseman, let alone a $7.26 million defenseman. But the entire reason OEL was even included into this trade was to get everything else balancing out the scales, Beagle, Roussel, Ericsson, all that stuff. And besides, Benning, this is the last of the Benning moves. So I think going out there and just appreciating that we do have a guy who is good in his own zone, who is pretty all right as a defensive option on this team, who is just being plagued by an abysmally low shooting percentage, even though he is way overpaid, he's still good. And that's kind of where the difference is. You can say that a player is good while also saying that they're overpaid. You don't need to go out there and make a conclusion, black or white, one side versus the other side, 100%, 100%. It's like a 50-50 here. You get yourselves a good defenseman, 
at like double the cap hit he's probably worth. So now, I guess it's up to OEL to go out there and show off that he can be that $8 million guy. It's a very tough task, but, you know, I just hope he does it just so we can go out there and stop talking about how bad the contract is. So, talk to me in the comments what do you think about Oliver Ekman Larson and his play in Vancouver so far. I hope you enjoyed this Vrja Shrolsen 99. And, bye. <laughs>